Good afternoon, everyone. Once again, this is Mang Saira, your instructor in the subject Environmental Science. For this session, we are going to discuss about plant agriculture. That's why I brought you here in our backyard. Just kidding. So <laughs> this is just a downloaded photo from Google. Just to, you know, relate our subject to my background. Okay, so for this session, I mentioned that we will discuss about plant agriculture. And at the end of our session, you should be able to learn the importance of soil, um, plant crops, and the tremendous amount of change that occurred in farming technology uh, since 1960s. And of course, also included in our session is the future of farming specifically in regards to the increased proliferation of genetically modified organisms or GMOs. So with that, I am going to share to you our PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so this, is, this will be our guide in our discussion. This PowerPoint presentation is downloaded from Our Own Science. Okay, so we have here, let me go back to the first slide. Okay, so yeah, we have now here, plant agriculture. Okay, so there is a quote. The soil is the great connector of lives and yeah, it's loading. The soil is the great connector of lives, the source of, the source and destination of all, without proper care for it, we can have no life. And this is really true. The soil is the great connector of life, the source and the destination of all, I hope you understand the, the deeper meaning of it. Without proper care of it, we can have no life. From Wendell Barry. Okay, so let us begin our lecture with these concepts. Plants need three basic components to grow. Energy, which they gain from absorbing light. Okay, specifically sunlight that is the source of energy, the elements carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, which they gain from the air and water. So we can abbreviate, abbreviate this as CHO, C-H-O, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, para mas madali ninyong maalala. Remember that the elements CHO, they gain it from the air, which is oxygen, and water, which is H2O. Smaller amounts of other elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which they absorb the soil. So we have here the Great American Desert. So ito, during the early exploration of the Great Plains in the U.S., the land was found to be unsuitable for European-style agriculture because the ecosystem were too dry, considering that this is a desert. Diba? Naintindihan na natin yung characteristic ng desert when we discuss about uh, ecosystems on land. The area was called the Great American Desert. So the area of the U.S. from the Eastern Rockies through Nebraska is considered mixed or short grass prairie. So ito yung gagamitin nating example sa plant agriculture. Though sa US ito, okay, precipitation is lower than the tall grass prairie to the east, leading to overall shorter plant species. So tingnan nyo naman, ganyan lang kaliliit yung mga plant. So farmers encouraged to settle into these arid short grass prairies also had a difficult time tilling or mixing and turning over the soil. So napakahirap. 
cast iron plows would become stuck and cake with clay stuck in the thick mat of prairie grasses. So, in other words, hindi nila matil ng maayos. Lain yung da na kukuklab na babayo bu nun maayos. Okay? So, in 1837, the blacksmith named John Deary invented a uh, wait a minute a polished steel plow that was able to cut through them with midwestern soil so yun ang tinutukoy natin converted ar uh, arid grassland was gradually converted into fields of corn wet and cotton so yun kung titignan natin yung akala nating lupa na hindi mapapakinabangan because of this kind of uh, invention, okay, a device that can able to cut through the soil, the, the barren soil. So yung arid grassland o yung tigang na lupa was gradually converted into fields of corn, wet, and cotton. So, meaning to say, napakinabangan siya. So, coyotes and gray wolves were heavily trapped and hunted to protect farmers' livestock. So, throughout the late 1800s, an increase in rain resulted in many highly successful years for farmers. Yun, ang good news. Some scientists and authors developed an idea called Rain Follows the Flow which hypothesized that this wet period was actually the result of increased farming. Kasi malaking factor, syempre, yung uh, na, nadidiligan. O, o, ano eh, generally, mababasa yung, yung soil doon sa lugar. So it follows yung rain, yung increase in rain power after nung matil na nila ng maayos yung lupa. Okay, so land throughout the plains became highly valued, leading to the Oklahoma land rush of 1889. This is actually a, a short video clip from a video, kaya lang hindi siya nag-play. Nag, nag okay, so let's move on to the next slide. In the plains, the staple crop was hard red winter wet. And producer that was a producer that was planted in the fall lay dormant over the winter, then harvested early summer. So ito yung tinatawag nilang red winter wet. Okay, so yan yung typical or yung staple crop na naggrow doon. Planted during fall, tapos na harvest naman early summer. Okay, so next. Nagkaroon lang ng konting uh, hang itong aking presentation. So let me wait for a while. Tignan natin yung ano ba ang nangyari dito. Uh, napindot ko pala yung link. Kaya i-direct tayo doon sa ano. Okay, so let's go back to the slide. Ito na. Dito na ulit tayo. Sorry for that inconvenience. Okay. So next. These are the following commodities na naharvest nila doon sa productive agricultural land. So these are the following staple crops Okay, that are produced in large quantities to meet a steady demand. So the top staple crops worldwide are sugar, wet, corn, and rice. So pinakamataas, uh, sugar cane, of course, the, the, the source of sugar. Maize, so yung mais, rice. Pangatlo lang, pero tayong sa Pilipinas, yan ang number one natin, rice. Okay? Pero sa ibang bansa, 
in America and US, yun, yun, ito yung kanilang ranking. Pero sa atin in the Philippines, number one ay ang rice. Diba? Okay. So, next. Most of the major world food staples are plants because of the 10% rule of ecological energy pyramid. That The 10% rule states that only about 10% of the energy in one profit level will be incorporated into the next level. Okay. So next, millions of acres of short grass prairie in the Midwest were cultivated with native plants like buffalo grass were replaced by domesticated ones. Okay. The soil. Let's talk about soil. Soil, ito, ito yung pinaka, ano, pag-uusap-usapan din natin dito. Okay. What is a soil? It is a mixture of minerals and partially decomposed organic matter. Soil begins as a rock but is gradually broken down to the process of weathering. Kung meron, kung bakit meron tayo ngayong um, soil is because of the process of weathering. We have two types of weathering, the mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. Pag sinabi natin mechanical weathering is the physical breakdown of rock by wind and water. While chemical weathering changes the molecular structure of minerals and compounds by adding or removing element. So, mechanical, yung simpleng pagka breakdown into small fragments ng mga bato by wind and water and other environmental factors or exter external factors. So, mechanical yun. Pero pag chemical weathering naman, yung involved na dito, yung change ng molecular structure ng mineral. Why? There are compounds that are added or removed. Okay? Erosion. Erosion is the removal of weathered rock and soil by wind and and water. Okay, so erosion yung parang transfer na siya, transfer from one place to another. So the removal of weathered rock. Na remove siya kasi nailipat naman siya sa iba na lugar. So erosion po 'yon. Okay, by by means of external factors like wind and water and even di ba humans can trigger um, erosion. So look at this, the differences in the shapes and altitude of the Appalachian Mountains and the Rocky Mountains reflect their age and differences in weathering and erosion. So bakit nagkaroon daw po ng different shapes and altitudes ang mga yung Appalachian Mountains and yung Rocky Mountains because of the weathering and erosion. Okay? So, tingnan niyo po. Next, soil is mixture of four components. Okay, so the humus, inorganic minerals, water and air, and the living microorganisms and invertebrates. So, take note of these four components na, na nasa soil, mixture ng soil. Number one, humus, which is the organic component of soil derived from the decomposition of dead plant and animal matter. So, generally, we call it humus. Okay, minsan baga ano sa school nung elementary pa tayo magdala daw ng humus na lupa o kaya loam soil. Okay. Di ba naririnig na natin 'yon? So, when we say humus, it is a uh, organic compound component or compound derived from the decomposition of dead plant and animal matter. Kaya nga siya ang maganda sa pagtanim kasi nandoon yung mga dead plant, animal matter that can be a source of uh, nutrients sa plant na itatanim mo doon sa lupa. Inorganic minerals. Humus kasi organic. Meron ding mga inorganic minerals. Okay? Water and air. Nandun din po. Meron po yan sa soil. Merong air sa soil. Living organisms and invertebrates. So nakikita nyo naman dito sa picture, di ba? May mga living microorganisms. Okay? Protists. Hindi natin nakikita, but they are there. Invertebrates like uh, itong earthworm. Okay? The beetle grub. Fungi. Those are uh, 
microorganisms. Pero yung earthworm, hindi naman siya microorganisms. Nakikita naman natin. They are invertebrate. Okay, so next. Soil is classified based on how much of each component it has. Okay, so sand has the largest particles and the lowest water retention, but it drains easily and does not become compacted. So ito, mga classification naman ito ng soil based on how much of each component it has. So ano yung mga components natin? Di ba itong apat? So depende sa kung gaano karami yun uh, makikita, ikaklassify natin sila as sand, silt, or clay. So pag sand has the largest particles and the lowest water retention. But it drains easily and does not become compacted. Ganun yung sand, di ba? Pag hinawakan mo nga ang sand, di ba? Hindi mo siya makakompact, magaano lang siya sa kamay. And it drains easily, madaling matuyo din. Silt has an intermediate-sized particles. So, medium lang, medium size. Ang sand, kumbaga large size. Ito, intermediate size. Pag clay naman, contains the smallest size particles which allows it to retain the most water but can get compacted and waterlogged easily. What The reason why it can retain the most water, can get compacted and waterlogged easily because of its size. The size of its particle are very small. Okay? So most soils are mixture of sand, silt, and clay called loam. So pag pinag, nagkita mo, madalas naman kasi talaga yung soil is mixture nitong tatlong classification, clay, silt, and sand, nag, merong kinatawag sa kanya generally na loam. Loam is the ideal soil for farmers because it uh, is rich in nutrients, retains water, and drains well. So yun pala yung ideal na lupa sa mga farmers, loam soil. So meron tayong tinatawag na O horizon. Ito, these are the layers ng soil. The O horizon is mostly non-decomposed plant litter called humus. Pinakaibabaw siya. Ito siya o, oh, organic. Okay, naka-horizon. Okay, horizon, di ba mga ganyan yan? Pahiga. The A horizon, sunod doon sa O, also called topsoil, contains a lot of organic matter mixed with some minerals. So may organic matter, may some minerals na. And underneath is the B horizon, also called subsoil, has very little organic. Instead, it is mostly made of small particles of clay minerals. Okay, clay minerals. B horizon. At the sea horizon, underneath, of course, of the B horizon, also called substratum, contains mostly rock. Ito na tayo sa substratum. Ararum na ini. Okay, sea horizon. The last layer is the parental material, also known as bedrock. This is an unweathered layer of rock that the soil originated from. Kaya siya, parental material, because it is said to be the origin or the source nung mga naging soil. Unweathered layer pa kasi siya. So meaning, buo pa siya. The origin of the soil. So yun ang tatandaan nyo from O, horizon, A, B, C, tapos R is the bedrock or the parental material. Okay, so grassland tend to have the thickest A horizon because the extensive root structure of the plant prevents uh, leaching. So ito na mga grassland, ang pinakatikest ay ang A horizon. Okay, yung sunod sa O horizon. Leaching, okay, na-mention kasi yung leaching, okay, leaching is the loss of soil nutrients as they dissolve in water from rain and irrigation. So, leaching, you know, lost yung soil nutrients, nawawala yung soil nutrients as they dissolve in water from rain and irrigation. So, medyo negative kapag nagkaroon ng mataas na amount of leaching. So, following the stock market crash in 1929, wet prices fell sharply. Farmers tried to recover their losses by overplanting and increasing crop yields. 
1931, a record crop of wet was harvested. Prices continued to fall. In the winter in of 1931 to 1932, a drought began that would persist for as long as seven years in some area. So, ganito ang mga crisis na pwedeng kaharapin kung halimbawa ikaw ay nasa agricultural sector. Okay, yung kung paano, kung gaano karami yung mga harvest mo at yung mapapa, mapapalago mo during the the planting season. Okay, so yun, example yun. The desert, the Great Plains experience, experience desertification, the conversion of farm, farmable land to desert due to human and environmental factors. So ito, nabaliktad yung kanina na yung arid land na convert into farmable land. Pag desertification, yung farmable land, yung napapakinabangan nating lupa uh, is converted to an arid land or a desert due to human and environmental factors. So, madaling sabi, hindi na natin mapapakinabangan yung lupa kapag nagkaroon ng desertification. Most likely to occur in ecosystems that are naturally natural arid and adjacent to large deserts. So, yun ang uh, possible reason. This is evidenced by the 14 severe dust storms in 1932 then 38 severe dust storms in the following year. So with that consecutive dust storms na nangyayari malapit doon sa farmable land, hanggang siya na din ay na, kumbaga nadamay na siya. Kasi syempre, storm yun eh. Dust storm yun. Madadala nun yung mga dust doon. Kaya na din desertive. Kumbaga na, nagkakaroon ng desertification. Okay. So erosion from water. So we, we, we made mention about erosion. Erosion includes any action that removes soil or rock particles and, mo and moves it elsewhere. So meron ditong transportation. Water erosion is complex and occurs over series of steps. Splash erosion occurs when soil is thrown by the force of raindrop impact. Ayun. Sheet erosion. These are the different ano na po pala. Uh, kinds of erosion. We have the splash erosion, of course, when soil is thrown by force of raindrop. So, ang, ang external factor dito is raindrop. Kapag malakas yung ulan, nagkakaroon ng erosion dahil na doon sa force o sa, sa impact ng raindrop. Okay, next is sheet erosion is the removal of the thin layer of soil from large area. Yan. Yan. Pag nag, ano ba yan tawag sa daas sa atin? <laughs> yung pag-antawag sa that. Kalimutan ko. Real erosion occurs when water flowing down a slope carves a small channels into the land. Ayan. Real erosion po yan. Occurs when water flowing down a slope carves small channel into the land. Para nagkaroon ng maliit na kanal, na channel dyan, kung saan kasi dadaan yung lupa, yung tubig. Kasi diba yung tubig, ang tendency niyan, pag nasa taas yung halimbawa, umuulan, tendency niyan bababa. So, naghahanap yan ng way para bumaba. And yun nga, nagkakaroon ng, since it is it flows down a slope, it carves a small channel. Okay, forming yung parang an slip, slip to, rail into the land. So, erosion din yun. Ito, gully erosion is the most severe caused by rapidly flowing water, creating deep channels in the ground. So, may similarities siya yes, sa uh, rail. Kaya lang, severe level ito. Because of the rapidly flowing water, pwedeng flood, di ba? Pwedeng flood ang cause niyan. Creating deep channels into the ground. So, severe ano po ito, erosion. The, the gully erosion. Okay? So, wind erosion is the transportation and deposition of soil particles due to air current. So, yung kanina, yung, ano yun? Uh, uh, ano yun? Water. Ito naman, wind erosion. One of the worst storms of dust bowl dumped 12 million pounds of eroded topsoil on Chicago. Grabe, napakalakas nitong storm na ito kasi 12 million pounds of eroded topsoil na carry papuntang Chicago from the dust bowl. Ma ma ano yun? Talagang malakas yun. So, biotic factors also contribute to the dust bowl. Swarms of grasshoppers descended on the few plants that 
survive. Look at that. Okay. So there was also an overpopulation of jackrabbits, partially caused by the removal of their main predators, coyotes and wolves. So dahil nga uh, inuhuli yung mga jack, yung mga coyotes and wolves dahil sila yung mga nag nag kumakain doon sa mga sa mga pananim. So dahil inuhuli sila na naano din sila eh kumbaga nahahunt din sila. Nagkaroon ng overpopulation sa jackrabbits. Kasi yung jackrabbits, yun yung kinakain din ng mga coyotes and wolves. Kaya lang ayaw ng ayaw naman ng mga farmers na madami yung plants because of this predators kaya hinuhuli and this is the result okay so soil conserve conservation multiple soil conservation techniques were part of the new deal program implemented by president franklin delano roosevelt uh, uh, na mention na natin ito last time si roosevelt actually roosevelt is uh, ano talaga parang he's into environment environmentalist ang ang ano niya ang, ang isa sa mga <clears throat> Advocacy. Okay. So, the contour plowing reduces water erosion by planting crops along the slope of land rather than straight up and down. So, this is one uh, conservation technique, the contour plowing that reduces water erosion by planting crops along the slopes okay, of the land rather than straight up and down. So, ang ganda niya kung tignan o. Oh. Next, many important commercial plants are row crops, meaning they must be grown in spaced rows. Yeah, tignan nyo, uh, by row sila. The spaces in between the plants are highly vulnerable to erosion. Cover crops are plants that completely cover the soil, protecting it from wind, wind erosion. So, yun yung mga crops din na, kung mga additional na nilalagay nila to prevent, to protect other plants from uh, erosion. Another is strip cropping. Alternate row crops like corn, cotton with cover crops like oats that completely cover the soil. So soil eroded from row crops will be trapped and helped by the cover crops, keeping it within the farm. So ganun yung technique niya, yung strategy niya. Strip cropping po ang tawag doon. Yung corn tapos followed ng uh, uh, cover crops, di ba yung cover crops? Anong ibig sabihin ng cover crops? Plants that completely cover the soil, protecting it from wind erosion. So kung may cover plant ka doon that, that completely covers the soil, so yung erosion, wind erosion, malilimit yun. Or matatrap, sabi nga dito, will be trapped and held by the cover crops, keeping it within the farm. So magiging safe yung, yung uh, crops, yung corn, yung cotton. That is called strip cropping. Next is terracing. Convert st steeply sloped land into a series of flattened terraces. Of course, kilalang kilalang natin ito. The Banawi rice terraces. Okay, the stair-like terracing slows the slows the downward round of of water, reducing erosion. Di ba napaka artistic ng pagkakagawa, lalo na sa Banawi rice terraces ng mga kababayan nating ipugaw. Rows of trees can serve as windbreaks reducing erosion by wind. Ayan, windbreaks naman yun. Pag may mga malalaking puno, na tatrap nila yung malalakas na, na hangin. In response to the dust bowl, okay, 220 million trees were planted called the Great Plains Shelter Belt. The human nutritional needs, the dust bowl was the worst famine to ever hit the United States. So yun yung tawag nila doon sa crisis na nangyari pala, the dust bowl. Famines are extreme scarcities of food resulting in diet, diets deficient in nutrients. So calories come from one of the three macronutrients, the carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. Okay, so yun yung tatlong micro nutrients na na kailangan natin. Of course, we can get that from taking in food or from our diet. Okay? So, undernourished is the result of a diet that does not meet an individual 
basic energy or the calories requirement. Saan magagaling yung calories requirement? Doon sa tatlong uh, components. The, the lipids, uh, proteins, and carbohydrates. So pag hindi yan na, na, na kumbaga na meat, magkakaroon ng undernourishment. Ito na nga yun. Humans also need smaller amounts of micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals. Yan pa. A person with a diet lacking in specific micronutrients or macronutrients is considered to be malnourished. Okay? Okay lang kung undernourished ka, pero pag malnourished ka na, mas ibang ano na din yun. Quasure core is caused by insufficient protein consumption resulting in a fluid imbalance in the digestive system. So the name is derived from the native language of Ghana, meaning the sickness the older child gets when the next baby is born due to a lack of breast milk. So that is quasure core. From the native language daw po ng Ghana, the sickness that the older get, the older child gets when the next baby is born. Bakit? Kasi pag may nakasunod na na bata, wala ka na. Kasi priority na yung younger. Okay, anemia is the name of any condition that result in decrease in the ability of blood to transport oxygen. So, anemic na. Often caused by malnourishment, lack of iron in the diet. Ano pa? Lack of iodine. These are macronutrients or, or macro uh, minerals. Okay? A lack of iodine can result in a goiter, an enlargement of the thyroid gland. Kahit dito sa atin, may nakikita tayo na goiter na yung, yung goiter na external, yung makikita mo talaga dito na nagbabulk. Okay, population bump. As the human population grew in the 20th century up to now, okay, 21st, famines were becoming increasingly common, especially in developing countries. So ito, 20th century, eh, tayo ngayon nasa 20th century, first century na tayo, di ba? So, mas madami yung famines. Okay? Especially in the developing countries. Kagaya ng Pilipinas. Okay? India especially was on the brink of massive famine in 1961. In 1968, a book entitled The Population Bomb predicted the battle to feed all of humanity is over. In the 1970s, hundreds of millions of People will starve to death in spite of any crush programs embark upon now. At this late date, nothing can prevent a substantial increase in the world death rate. Grabe naman itong prediction. Ano? Okay, so now, on the Green Revolution, the prediction of worldwide famine never came true because a series of advancement in farming led to a massive increase in crop yields starting in the 1960s. Okay, so yung prediction kanina na grabe nang mamamatay due to, ito oh, di ba? Will starve daw. Ibig sabihin, marami ang magugutom. But because of the advent of technology, there are series of advancement in farming lead to a massive increase in crop yield. So na-sustain yung malataas na demand ng mataas na populasyon. The advent of industrialized farming, also called the Green Revolution, marked three major changes in modern agriculture. Okay, ito, tawag natin doon sa nangyaring revolution in, in the industrialized farming is the Green Revolution. So, ano po yung three major changes in modern agriculture? Number one, the movement away from subsistence agriculture farm where farmers produce to support their families to industrialized monoculture, where only a few commercially valuable crops are grown. For example, corn, kasi siya ang mataas na demand, okay, which covers about 72 million acres around the U.S. Sa atin, sa Pilipinas, rice. So napaka madami din yung agricultural, agricultural land natin that covers or that plants rice sa nasa parting ano siya nasa central um, nasa may mga Nueva Ecija next 
the introduction of intensive artificial breeding, ito, and genetic engineering. So, yan ang isa pang, kumbaga, uh, characteristic ng green revolution. The introduction of intensive artificial breeding of crops and genetic engineering. And lastly, the increased use of inputs, including external irrigation, synthetic fertilizers, and pesticides. So, yun po yung tatlong dapat nating tandaan changes, the three major changes in modern agriculture. Ngayon, these are all evident in every country that have an agricultural land. The, in, um, ito, the agricultural water usage, irrigation, this is very essential. Of course, in plant agriculture, yung irrigation, the application of water to soil accounts for largest single share of global water use. Irrigation systems are compared with efficiency, a percentage of the amount of water withdrawn that actually makes it to the roots of target plants. Okay, so most irrigation systems are inefficient with only about 30% of the applied water actually reaching the crop. So, yung efficiency, nasa 40% lang. Okay, kasi kung sa 100%, yung iba doon, hindi naman actually can reach the, 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 the roots of, of the target plants. The, the furrow irrigation works by delivering large amounts of water through small parallel channel that runs through the rice field. Oh, just like this picture. So ito, mas efficient siya. Nasa 40 to 60% ang kanyang efficiency. Ito naman, drip irrigation. We have three, ano na, ano yung nauna natin? Irrigation. Yung most irrigation, yung talagang usually, irrigation lang, yung kakaya dito sa atin, may irrigation sa gilid, sang palayan. Okay? So, yun yung, hindi siya ganun ka-efficient. 40% lang na absorb ng mga plants. Ito yung furrow irrigation, up to 60%. Tapos yung drip irrigation use porous tubes above, above or below ground that gradually deliver water to the roots of individual plants. 90 to 95% efficient siya. So, so dun sa tatlo, siya na yung pinaka-efficient. E ito, the center pivot irrigation involves a piece of equipment that rotates around a single point creating circles shaped irrigation field. 80% din ng kanyang efficiency. Ang, na, na, ang naaalala ko tuloy, yung parang bomba baga na rabusin mo na siya. So, ganun yung kanyang concept. Pero, ito nga, involves a piece of equipment that rotates around a single point. Kaya, yung makikreating na nyo to, bilog-bilog. Circle-shaped irrigation field. That, ang ganda niya. Large-scale irrigation became available in the Great Plains following the discovery of the Ogala Aquifier, a massive underground reservoir of water. So, Ogalia, Ogalyala Aquifier, ito hindi, syempre hindi ko familiar sa atin kasi lahat ng nasa PPT na ginagamit natin ay naka, so, uh, kumbaga, nasa US talaga since our source is, the author is from US. Pero ito, aquifier, kaya nakatulong ito dahil nga it is a reservoir of water. Okay? So, another is the concept of fertilizer. Of course, this is really all, really important. Lack of three macronutrients can slow the plant growth. Na, na yun nga, na sustain yun ni fertilizer. So, lack of three macronutrients can follow plant growth. The nitrogen, phosphorus, and Potassium. So these nutrients are depleted from soil during each growing season and must be replenished. Pag nag-harvest ka, since nagamit na yung lupa na yon, yung nandoon na mga macronutrients, na-deplete na yon, kasi na, kumbaga napakinabangan na siya nung mga plant na una mong tinanin. Now, so it must be replenished. Kailangan mapalitan. Synthetic fertilizer is made from mined minerals, allows for a specific nutrient blend based on the needs of the crops and soil. So, meron na tayong mga synthetic fertilizer. Okay? So, organic fertilizers are derived from plant and animal matter. Example, animal manure. 
the dung and urine of livestock, pupo tapos wiwi ng mga livestock, kagaya ng karabaw, mga, mga baka. Compost is organic matter that has been decomposed by bacteria, fungi, and microorganisms. Compost. So kung alam niyo yung compost pit, di ba, yung mga basura, okay, na na-decompose, yung nag-decompose ng bacteria, fungi, so it can be used as a fertilizer and considered as organic fertilizer kasi from living organisms siya. Some farmers will minimize the fertilizer they need by using a technique called crop rotation. During one year, a nutrient depleting corn crop, example, corn and tobacco will be grown. The following year, legumes that form mutualistic relationship with nitrogen-fixing bacteria are planted. So ito, parang strategy yung crop rotation. Iba nga yung taon, tapos yung sunod naman, iba naman. Okay, halimbawa, yung una nilang pinanim daw is a nutrient depleting crop kagaya ng corn and tobacco. So pag na-harvest mo yun, depleted yung land, di ba? So the following year, pwede ka magtanim ng mga legumes kagaya ng beans, peas, and lentils. Ito naman, it can, sila kasi, they can form mutualistic re relationship with nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Okay? Kung baga, masasurvive nila yon uh, Energy. Agriculture accounts for about 15% of the total energy use in the US. This rate has increased as more and more farming has been mechanized. Force. Pest control. Kailangan din ito. Kasi ginagamit din ito sa... Kailangan din itong bigyan ng pansin eh. So, biological pests are any organism that damage crops and reduce yields. Example, insect, birds, rodents, weeds, mga peste. So, we use pesticides. Pesticides are chemicals that kill or control population of these undesirable organisms. Insecticides specifically target insects. Herbicides specifically target weeds or undesired plants. So, you have pesticide, mga peste, general Pero pag ang target is specific sa insect, insecticide, pag ang target weeds or undesired plant herbicides. Botanical pesticides are tox toxins produced by plants. So usually non-persistent and biodegradable. Example, nicotine sulfate, roten uh, rotenone. Okay, medyo safer pa ito. Ano? Pero yung synthetic pestici pesticides are man-made and not found in nature. Highly persistent. Examples, yung DDT. Anong yung ibig sabihin ng DDT? Dichloro, diphenyl, trichloroethane. Yan yung DDT na, sa mga synthetic pesticides. Organophosphates. Okay. So, one of the consequences of pesticides use is pesticide residue. Chemicals that remain on food once they are applied. So, merong mga ganun talaga. Eh, delikado po yan lalo na kung mga synthetic yung ginagamit na fertilizer. Okay, so yung mga yung DDT pwede nating ma ma intake yung etox, eh, highly tox din yun eh. Persistent pesticides can bioaccumulate forming higher and higher concentrations in organisms over a long period of expo exposure. So yan no, bioaccumulation. Ma-accumulate yung persistent na pesticide. Yung mga persistent na pesticide ito yun no, synthetic Tignan niyo yung mangyayari. So, contaminant levels through time dahil na-accumulate sa kanilang katawan, nandiyan na. So, they become more highly concentrated as they move up the food chain, a process called biomagnification. So, nandun, transfer sa, sa isda, na, na kinain ang seal, kinain ang seal ng, ng bear. So, biomagnification, yung persistent pesticide na karating na hanggang doon sa sa Apex ng food chain or ng food web. The bioaccumulation of DDT in predatory birds caused a thinning of eggshells and a decline in many bird population. Yun. So, negative effects siya. So, pesticide residues can also affect human health. This is mostly like, likely to, to occur in, produ in produce that we eat whole. Yay. The Dirty Dozen list is a list of published by the Environmental Working Group of produce that are most likely to absorb and retain pesticides. So ito yung 2019 Dirty Dozen list. 
the fruits and veggies with the most pesticide residue. O, tingnan nyo na ang paborito nyo dyan at baka nandyan. O, nandito mga paborito ko. Nandito yung ubas. Nandito din yung kamatis. Ano ba? Iwasan ko na ba sila? Iwasan nyo din ba sila? Siguro, ugasan lang natin talaga ng maayos sila. Pero, yun yung ano, yun yung parang mahirap kasi nga, once na na-absorb, hindi mo naman alam kung nandun lang siya sa skin or totally absorb na siya pag kinain mo. Nandun na. Okay. So, ito naman, the, kung meron tayong dirty dozen list, we have the clean 15, 15 list. Okay. Other types of produce called the clean 15 have protective layer that prevents them from absorbing as much pesticide residue or naturally persist resistant to pest. So, ito, kahit may na-apply na persistent fertilizers na napoprotect sila nung kanilang mga outer layer like avocado. Avocado season na yata ngayon. Okay? Bakit naman? <laughs> Just kidding. Sweet corn, pineapple, sweet peas, onions, papaya, oh, eggplant, asparagus, kiwi, cabbage, cauliflower, cantaloupe, broccoli, mushrooms, and honeydew melon. So, yan ang ating top 15 clean 15 list. Okay. Moving on, pesticides have gradually become less effective as insects have evolved resistance to them. Yun lang. So, nagiging less effective yung pesticide kasi nag evolve din yung resistance ng mga insect. Eh. So, may tanong tayong tinatawag na pesticide resistance. Parang antibiotic resistant din siya. Okay? It is the ability of an organism to develop a tolerance to a chemical. Kapag resistant na ang pesticide, kahit gaano karami ang nilagay mong pesticide, hindi na mamatay ang pest. Eh. Na-absorb na lamang sang, or sang, sang, sang plant, gabus na pesticide na inapply mo. Pero yung gusto mong mamatay na pest ay hindi na matay. Napaka, ano nun, negative. So we have the integrated pest management a strategy where synthetic pesticides are used as a last resort in dealing with insects and weeds to minimize the issue of resistance and residue. Dapat lang. Okay? So the IPM, yung, uh, Integrated Pest Management, advocates using prevention measures first, then intervention only when necessary. So, cultural controls involve changing farming practices to minimize pest growth. Mold and mildew grow in damp conditions and may result from overwatering. Okay, sige. Tingin natin. Physical or mechanical controls involve somehow blocking pests from the environment. For example, yung mga trap. Trap. Wait. Lobat. Excuse me. We have trap baited with pheromones or food to, to catch certain insects. So maganda ito. Parang na-attract lang sila pero yung ano mo is to trap them. Mulch to block unwanted plant seeds from germinating. Okay, galing. Next. Konti na lang ito. Maghang na siya ulit. For a while. Mga beetles. Yung ginamit na bait sa kanila, yung pheromones. Pheromones is, uh, yun, parang maaamoy nila. Kaya na-attract din sila eh. Biological controls um, reduce wait, wait up. Biological controls introduce parasites, predators, or competitors to the pest insect or weed. So many species of wasp lay their eggs inside the bodies of caterpillars, which then eat them alive. Oh my goodness. So ano din siya? Para hindi na kakainin na, na yung ano. 
competitor lang, kumbaga lalabanan niya yung existing na pest. Ano kaya kung mag-play ito? Parang ayaw naman. Ayan, sige. Four minutes lang naman. Let's see ang example ng biological controls that introduces parasites, predators, or competitors. Taba na. Mm. Meron palang wasp, wasp sa loob ng kanyang skin. Para si Tukwas. Grabe. kawawa ang caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Mature na siya. Break out. Hey, may ngipin na. Okay, makakainin niya na yung Kaya niya na mag-penetrate sa skin na ano. It will, it will find a way out. Kakainin niya na. Kaya na oh. What will happen to the cut repeater? Mm, the, the, the caterpillar pillar because will be paralyzed. Wala na, magagawa ang caterpillar. Ayan na. Yay. Dami. Grazie. <laughs> Grabe yung naging behavior. <laughs> It protects now then. Mm. 
Ganun pala yun. Okay. So, now, let's move on. Yun lang po ang, ano, kumbaga pinakita lang doon yung biological controls introduced parasit. Parasitic kasi yung, ano, eh, yung caterpillar na ito. Tapos, yung inintroduce is a uh, species, another species, yung wasp nga, which is, ano naman, hindi naman parasitic pa yung wasp na yon. Pero yung sabi nga na danger kanina, kapag yung wasp ay na-impregnate ng mga wasp na na parasitic. Okay, so that is the, 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 the concept of biological controls. Okay, next, spraying fungicides, herbicides, and insecticides are chemical controls and are used as a last resort. Synthetic pesticides should only be used if botanical ones are ineffective. So, last resort natin yun. Kasi at the end, tayo pa din naman ang mag-suffer kasi tayo yung consumers ng mga kinakrap eh. Organic agriculture, organic foods by definition have been produced without any synthetic pesticides or fertilizers. Kaya siya organic. Walang inapply na any synthetic pesticides or fertilizer. Organically derived fertilizer is used as our botanical pesticides. No-till agriculture is a method of growing plants without tilling or turning over the soil. Benefits include Reduction of erosion, no disruption of soil microbes in invertebrates, less energy fuel is consumed. These are some drawbacks to this technique. Most fertilizer is needed until the O horizon begins decomposing naturally. More herbicides are needed to control weeds. Okay, so hydroponics. So hydroponics is a method of growing plants without the use of soil. So kaya nga siya hydro from, from the word Hydro, which means water. So, this method, walang ginagamit na soil kundi ay water. Plants are grown with the roots immersed in water containing all the necessary nutrients for growth. So, pag, mamaya pag-uusapan natin, I mean, uh, sa mga susunod nating discussion, pag-uusapan natin yung about the fishing and aquaculture and we will uh also discuss this hydroponics so it takes place in a greenhouse allowing for a longer growing season and decreased needs for pesticides gmo i i hope you are fa already familiar with genetically modified organisms or gmo these are another alternative to pesticides this is to implant dna into crops from other species that are resistant. So these are called GMO. There is a modification on its genetic level on its DNA. Two of the most commonly grown crops in US are corn and soy. Okay? Mostly genetically modified. So if you want to ask me or you ask yourself, are you eating genetically modified organisms? Most highly probably. <laughs> Why? Corn. Soy. Soy sauce, lahat ng mga products na nag-contain ng soy, na may corn. Most of it, di ba mga products natin made from US, ganyan. So, mostly po are, are genetically modified. Para nga kasi masustain yung napakataas na demand. Ito na yun eh, gumagamit na sila ng GMO. Ito, uh, BT corn has been genetically modified to produce certain proteins from a species of bacteria called Bacillus. Thuringiensis. So, yung BT corn, kaya siya tinawag na BT nga kasi may introduction nitong bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis. So, has been genetically modified to produce certain proteins. Yan. The proteins are poisonous to the European corn borer. E, itong European corn borer na ito, ito ang ano eh, ang salarin kung bakit napakahirap magpatubo ng corn. Kahit dito sa sa Pilipinas, yan, yung corn borer na yan. Kaya, meron silang nilagay na uh, BT, yung Bacillus thuringiensis sa, sa corn. E ito, nagproduce ito ng protein na, na poisonous sa corn borer. Kaya, hindi niya, mamamatay siya. Hindi niya na makakain yung corn. So, Roundup Ready Corn is resistant to a glyphosate 
and herbicide pulled under the brand name Roundup. Okay. The herbicide is sprayed on a field killing under undesired weeds but leaving the, the corn. Harvest. As a result of the changes of the Green Revolution and the introduction of GMO, take note po ha yung GMO, genetically modified organisms, walang masyadong ina-apply na tayo doon na mga fertilizer or synthetic chemicals, kundi mismong ang DNA na on the gen genetic level, nagkaroon na ng modification na kung saan mismong ang plant kaya niya ng kumbaga maging resistant. Okay? sa mga doon sa mga herbicides, sa mga pesticides, sa mga insects, insects na ano. Kumbaga nag na, na ano na nila yung sarili nila as resistant. In the US, the biggest crop produced is corn with 84 million harvested acres in 2011. As a result, corn is used as an ingredient in many types of processed food including animal feed. So, baka sabihin niyo hindi kayo mahilig sa corn hindi kayo mahilig sa soy. Pero yun, ginagabit mo yun to feed livestock. Eh baka doon kayo mahilig sa livestock. Uh, di possibly natatransfer din siya. Okay. Wait lang. Hindi pa tayo tapos. Ay, tapos na pala tayo. <laughs> okay. For the last slide, balikan ko lang siya. About 70% yun, di ba? About 70% of the carbon in the body of a tibigan is from corn. So, sa America. Pero sa atin, baka 70% of the carbon in the body galing pa naman sa, sa rice. And you know, yung sa rice naman, there is also a concern. Yung tinatawag natin the golden rice. Kasi golden rice is genetically modified organism. Kung saan merong in-inject na dyan na sa sa rice para ang, ang ang green kasi ng golden rice kaya siya golden kasi parang gold kulay yellow kasi dinagdagan siya ng ng ano yan beta ah, hindi siya beta carotene uh, yung yung pampalinaw ng mata oo kasi doon tayo nagkaroon ng crisis Ano nga ang tawag doon? Wait lang ha, para ma-establish natin yung sinasabi kong golden rice. Ito yung... Yo, beta carotene nga pala, tama pala ako. A precursor of vitamin A. Okay, so the golden rice is a variety of rice produced through genetic engineering to biosynthesize beta carotene. So pag kinain natin yung rice na yon, meron na tayong beta carotene na hindi nga natin usually na kinakakain in our diet kaya nagkakaroon ng um, sakit na tinatawag na VAD that is vitamin A deficiency yung VAD kaya yun but the concern there is genetically modified engineering uh, organism yung kakainin mo and sabi nga sa mga sa mga recent studies that GMOs have its Kung baga, hindi mo siya makikil ngayon, but it has a long-term effect daw sa health ng tao. Kaya marami pa din yung, kung baga, yung takot ano, sa pag ano, ng GMO. Kaya as much as possible, ayaw nila ng GMO. Pero, you know what? Minsan hindi talaga natin alam, hindi naman natin may iwasan that, that we are already um, eating. Actually, it might be na we are already enjoying genetically modified organism. Pero as much as, as much as possible, if we can eat organic or products with from natural, as natural as it is, doon tayo because that is the safest way para masustain natin yung, yung life natin. Kasi with all of this na mga revolution, green revolution, the main point kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng mga revolution sa agriculture para hindi tayo magutom. Right? Kasi pag nagutom tayo, what will happen? We will die. And we won't, we don't want to, you know, to, to die in, in hunger. Kaya, merong mga ganitong mga revolution or mga alternatives. Pero, kung 
yung mga alternatives nga na akala mo masusustain ang life mo, eh yun naman pala ang magpapaikli sa buhay mo. What the sense? Right? So as much as possible, if we could eat the, the natural food that we can get in our environment that God created, as natural as it is, better do it. Yun, or yeah, yun yung uh, ano natin. At kung magkatatangkilikin natin. Okay, so I think that's the last slide. Mm-hmm. So I hope you are getting the, the whole point of our discussion today, which is all about plant agriculture. Okay, so yung pinaka main sense nga, itong plant agriculture in the Philippines, of course, napakarami na ng mga agricultural land na nakukonvert into industrialized or mga residential land. Actually, merong batas dyan na inaano na dapat hindi agad-agad yung mga agricultural land ay makonvert sa mga ganoon. Why? Kasi nga, agricultural land dapat kung ano ang mas mapapakinabangan nating maitanim doon para mas tumaas ang ang supply natin dahil tumataas ang demand yung supply dapat tumaas din yun to of course para ma, ma- sustain natin yung pangangailangan ng 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 populasyon okay so i hope as a student bilang isang concerned citizen alam natin kung paano natin papakinabangin kung anong halimbawa meron tayong lupa gamitin natin yung mga techniques na pwedeng magamit natin para ma-sustain yung the best na magagawa natin doon sa merong sa lupang meron ka makapagtanim ka ng maayos okay of course if if you plant di ba kung may itinanim meron kang aaninin pero pag naanin mo na it does not stop there o pahayaan mo bang nakatiwangwang ang lupa Meron pa bang nutrients ang lupa na yon nang papakinabangan mo ulit or ng iba pang organisms or ng ng environment in general so yun we have to think n- ng mga bagay na talagang uh, hindi magaharm lalo na sa tao and to the environment itself that's the main essence why we are studying environmental science not only to know the basic concept about it but how do we apply the knowledge we know okay in our in our daily lives you are all technology students for example sabihin niyo na hindi naman ako magpo-farm hindi naman ako farmer pero ang tatay mo baka farmer baka some time in your life you want to involve yourself in agriculture so paano mo siya mapapalago o paano mo siya magagamit na magkikinabang ka talaga okay so i hope with this lecture ay nagkaroon tayo ng mag ng mas concern sa ating pong uh, environment specifically dito sa plant agriculture na topic natin for uh, this session. So with that, I now end our session. Thank you so much and goodbye class. Have a nice day.